Where is the uh, switch? Back in that corner back there? Okay. Okay, this first part is uh, some of the work we did with Michael Bates, the receiver, the Olympic uh, medalist and the receiver that we got from Arizona. And I believe the first thing that we're going to see here is the three-step weave, which is just a rhythm drill. And there it is, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And, and really, he's at the beginning stages when he's doing this, and he's a little bit off rhythm. But all it is is a coordination between his head, his hands, and his feet to develop rhythm and anticipate ahead of time foot movements and foot plants. And he'll come back at the camera this time, and it should be a nice, smooth, rhythmical, nice forward body lean to bend at the waist. And he's going to start with his left foot back, and every third step he's going to change the head. He's a little slow with the head. You can see the nice arm drive because he's a track guy, and he obviously knows how to do that. There's the three-step weave. This next drill is the squares drill. He's just working, and again, it's anticipating plant foot going into the ground. He's not as good as putting it in and as violent putting it down as I'd like to see him. But you notice the lean, the arm drive, the quickness, and we're just working on squares, just trying to improve the rhythm of running routes and get him planting. And that's all this is, is the square drill. And I think he'll come back at us again here teaching a young receiver just how do you get them started and how do you do things to help them run routes. Plant, notice his arms die just a little bit on some of these cuts. We need to improve that. He needs to be a little sharper, plant that foot a little better. But basically, there's the square drill. Okay, now here I believe we're just working on stance and start, and this is one of his poorest areas because he's never had to make a start from a two-point stance. And so we've, we've, he got better than this, but you notice how low he is and the movement of coming forward. No false steps. And we work this drill every day on stance and start. He's a little bit too bound up right in there, but um, he eventually gets to the point where he's a lot more comfortable. This is just something completely new for him. But you notice his movements are forward. The burst is forward. There's not a lot of false steps. He's pretty good about that. He's just a little bound up in this area right in here initially. And now we're just working on taking some angle releases. Same thing. Work on the stance and start part if you have the time to do it. Angle release straight up the field. Cover two release, Cover two release right there. Um, some ball catching drills. We'll see a couple of them that we used with him. can't remember which one we started with here. Okay, this was the, the uh, look over one shoulder when the ball's thrown, catch it over the other. Just looking, and when the ball's thrown, and that was a really poor throw on my part, and he's laughing at me, but, but the ball's thrown, he's going to look, refocus on it on this side. He's pretty good with the chin, getting his chin to the ball. <coughs> chin up to the ball, he's pretty good with it. You can fast forward to maybe the next drill. And I, the thing is that we did with this, and it were, we, because we have the time in the off season with him, I showed him this whole tape, and we slowed it down and looked at him. This is the drill of catching the ball coming in over your shoulder, and that last five feet, noticing how the chin needs to come to the ball. <coughs> Boom. Otherwise, you're not going to catch it. That last five feet as the ball closes into you, the chin's got to get to the ball. And we just looked down, watched him do this, and we got it over both shoulders, and there it is coming into him. Catching the extended ball as it goes past your face, your head has to move with it and get to it. A very good training device to just work on every aspect of catching the ball. Okay, we can fast forward a little bit more. Okay, now here is a similar type of thing as we talked about finishing the last few yards of a route. We're just doing this in front of a net. If you could run that back one time. I'll work, I want to point out the, the part on the curl route. Watch how everything stays forward until the route is finished. I, eyes forward.
forward, shoulders down, and then he comes back to it, finishing the route out, and we're just simulating catches, always coming back to the ball. Get one more of these, plant, now drive back to it, keep the arms in the position to, as you come out of the cut, to be able to raise them up quickly. Let's fast forward to some others. Okay, right here. This is just simulating coming across on an in route of some sort. Same thing here, last five yards, work on driving the arms through, get up, downhill to the ball. As you notice here, I make him break about four to five yards where the, 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 the uh, net and everything is probably on this line right here. But I make him go beyond the net and then come down in front of it to catch the ball, to get in the habit of coming downhill to the ball. And so I've got him going and finishing that route. He's beyond the net, and he's got to come back down to get in front of it. And that just can, it reinforces the fact of coming downhill to the ball. Let's speed it up again to the next drill. Same thing. We're just catching the ball. In front. Okay. Now we're working bump and run releases. And Michael struggles with this at early in, in the first part of this. He doesn't get outside the edge of the frame. He, we need to be out here and out here. And he's not quite getting all the way out there. Now we filmed him from behind. We needed to be back a little bit farther. But just working on what the defensive back is seeing, <coughs> the movement. Is there lateral movement? Are you working outside the edge? There he was not. He was just moving his head in place. I want to see him out here or out here. That's a double move, but his double move didn't go anywhere. He just planted his feet in the ground, and he was killing grass. A little better outside the edge. Double move one way or the other. Now I've got him. I'm trying to offset him to make him think of being off the edge and move a little bit more laterally. Notice we're working on the violence with the arms, the slap and the rip, and you have to be violent to, to do it. You're not going to come through and get anything done by being soft with your hands. Come through with a good, powerful rip, and then the rip, in many cases, puts you back in this mode of arm movement. Okay, let's again, let's see if we gets outside the edge. All right, that's good enough with that one. Let's go to uh, the other tape here. By outside the edge, you, you mean you don't want those arms stick out to touch him at all? No, I, yeah, I want him well outside of the frame of that sled or well outside the body frame of the defender. The, the body frame of the sled, not particularly the arms. Right, <laughs> exactly. Eject, Eject is on. What's that? Yes, he got to the point where he did. In fact, it happened after we showed the tape to him. Because when you stand there and you do it, sometimes you don't realize what you're doing or not doing. And after we showed him the tape, he got a lot better at it. In fact, I've got some real one-on-one -on -one bump stuff here. The eject is uh, it's on the uh, stop button. Mm -hmm. Just hold it down. Okay, that's the one I want. Okay. 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 I'll get a release. Got it. Okay, now again here, this is again bump and run stuff, but looking at it, um, we want to see if we're getting outside the body frame when we make the movements. Uh, not bad. He's a little bit outside. He gets outside and back to it using a double move. Here's Michael again. This is a, a months later in training camp. <coughs> Rob Thomas is really good about getting outside the body frame. Boom. Get the defender to slide. Anytime you get him to move, see, there we go, good. You can run that back. You see how you get, once you get the defender to move, you've got a chance. If you just stand there and dance in place, he's got you. 
Same with a pass rusher. If a pass rusher just comes straight up into a guy, you get covered. But if you make an offensive lineman move like that, you've got a chance of beating him. Same thing. Get outside. There we go. Get him to move. Now you've got a chance. Same concept. And it's a reactive thing. You'll notice in many cases, they, when they start, they don't know which side of the guy they're going to go to. But they're going to make him move, see his reaction, and then take the best chance, best way after that. Good. See, he was going to come back, but then he saw the guy never stepped over. <coughs> okay. Good. Come through with the rip. Not bad. And again, all we're working on here is a bump release. This one is not real good, but he's just so quick and powerful that he can get away. Good, there we go. Work the edge, get the defender to move, then pick the, make a decision. Does he overreact or does he not react enough? Now, Brian Blades just goes straight up to him, but Brian's got very quick hands. He can get their hands off him and just go. And here we are again. We'll go through just a couple of these. these are, again, some of these guys you can see have gotten a little better at getting outside on the edge. There, there, back through. I've got to continue to harp on them. Get outside. There. Just work on this, just work on so that any or anything, any way they want to do it, but just get used to working the edges. Get outside the body frame. Nice and low. Come through with the rip with power and get going. And I always have them bend back. I always want them hugging that thing tight. Don't end up way out here. Get in the habit of getting straight up the field after you make moves. A little better, a little bit of power. That's good. And then doing it from behind, we can really see if they're getting outside. And if you see any blue jersey come outside of there, then we're getting done what we want. There. Good. There. Good. Okay. That's good. There's a quick look at some of the bump and run stuff so you can get an idea of what we're talking about outside the edges. <laughs> It's the one I put it back under here again. Okay. All right. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and these are just some uh, routes being run, and we'll look at some of the, just a few of them, just look at some of the points we talked about earlier. Some of them are against bump and run. Most of them are against off coverage. All right, here's an example. Run this one back on the takeoff or the go route of getting into the position where you can smell the guy's breath, getting close to him so he has to turn on one spot to stay with you. And you go right by him. And this guy is way faster than that guy. But he ran by him. And here, showing the burst up the field and downhill to the ball. Some of these weaves, but you notice how when we get right back on top of them, you can run, you get that immediate separation. Out route, nice and clean, arms driving, pretty good route, shoulders down. Pretty good stance, movements forward, work to the proper shoulder to break off of, give him the final burst up the field. Get close to him, the closer you are with the break point, the better off you are. Good stance, good get off. Find that shoulder you need to work on. If it's man coverage, you know it, get to that shoulder. Bump and run. Bend back to him. <coughs> Burst up the field. What you do off the top, finishing it off the top in many cases helps you get open if you're solid at the top of the route. Good shoulder drop, good come back to the ball. Better work the edge, not bad. Now, off the top is the key. Drive back downhill. If you have balance at the break point, then you have power to have acceleration back. Some of these routes now we'll practice from the five-yard line, 10-yard line in. Run that one back. 
Notice again in how in bump coverage on this next one, when we get bump coverage, we once we escape re release, we bend back to the guy, bend into him, give him the two-way look, and then break one way or the other. Off the top. If you've got your hands in the proper position and your weight, then you have power when you make your break, and then you can fight back through any tough situations. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you cannot get the inside shoulder. Is that what you were going to say? Yes. Yes, sometimes you're not always able to. And then you've got to be good off the top, was what we tell them. Then if you can't get to that shoulder, then be good off the top. Run that last one back in real quickly on the go route against bump and run. Here's another example of why you bend back to the DB. After you beat him, now bend into him. Look at the angle it takes him on, and then we bend back out away from him. So you bend him in, and you're just trying to change the angle of the defender. There we are on the inside shoulder. Sometimes you can get it, sometimes you can't. DBs are smart. You try to get it, they just back farther inside. There it is. Bend up, run that one back. Here's a crossing route where you're going to bend. Beat him inside, now bend him up the field. Bend back to him, change his angle away from where you're going, and then move away from him. And here we did some double coverage stuff, which, I mean, we're just splitting double coverage and recognizing it. That's, that's it. We could get the lights back on. We'll get on to some other things. But really, <clears throat> but that is a very good question that was asked. Very good question, because <clears throat> you ideally would like to be on the proper shoulder when you're going to make your break. But if you cannot get to that shoulder, then you have to have something to tell those guys. Tell the kids, uh, because a good DB, if you try to get to the inside shoulder, all he does is back farther inside and maintain his inside leverage. Then what you tell them is, OK, you can't get that shoulder. Then burst and try to get his hips turned. And even though um, I'm trying to break here, I can't, I'm, not, I'm trying to get that inside shoulder. I can't get it. So then instead of keep fighting for the inside shoulder, I eventually then turn and try to get my hips turned back this way and then good off the top and back downhill. So if you can't get the shoulder you want, then straighten up and show him a burst to get his hips turned, then you can beat him and good off the top. So that's uh, some of that uh, right there. And it kind of showed you some of the things that we're doing, showed you a few of those drills that I think can really help. Where do you start with a young guy on teaching young kids how to run routes? To me, that's a good spot with uh, some of the weave stuff and the square stuff, because anticipating a plant foot is a very hard thing to do, because I, I know if I break to my left, I really want to break on my inside foot, but anticipating when I'm going to be able to get that down is not as easy as we all think when you teach a young kid to do it. So some of those square drills and things like that and just going around in squares on, corn, on cones is very good. <clears throat> What I want to finish up here briefly uh, is to talk about some, some X's and O's on some things about blitz in the one back and attacking blitz. And when I say attacking, I, I use the word with a purpose. Um, the, the reason is you want to, if you're going to get blitzed, you want your players to think, oh boy, here it comes because we're going to get them instead of, oh no, here they come. We want to attack it, go after it aggressively, and make big plays happen. Because in, in all reality, some of the bigger plays you can get is when they're blitzing, because everybody's on this side of the line of scrimmage. You throw the ball completed on that side of the line of scrimmage, there's hardly anybody there left to tackle. <clears throat> so attack the blitz, go after it. One back philosophy, and I'm sure if you listen to Dennis or any other one back people, there's, you know, what we're going to do is we'll talk quickly about a purpose, some of the personnel, the formations, give you a couple of protections. And when we're talking about going after the blitz, um, we're just, in the NFL, it's just like college, it's just like high school. You never know when they're going to come. Number two, your quarterback probably 
isn't always equipped to see it the way you'd want him to. Um, number three, they can bluff you a little bit, and then they play zone. Uh, we don't have much time to audible because we don't have much game clock, so we've got to have things that are good. We can call, and we think, well, this is a high tendency for them to blitz, but they may not. So we better have something that's good against everything. So what we try to do in a lot of those situations is go seven-man protections and three-man routes. Three-man routes that are going to be good against. If it is blitz, it's great. If it's zone, two deep or three deep, anything we call here has got a pretty good chance. So we, we try to do that. We'll look a little bit at the quick game, three-step drop, routes for blitz and zone, drop back, five-step routes for blitz and zone. One-back philosophy, and if you listen to Dennis, it's the same thing. Uh, spread the field with formations in motion. Uh, create mismatches, receivers on <laughs> linebackers or receivers on safeties. In many cases, if a safety, if a, if a kid was a really good cover guy, then he'd be a corner instead of a safety. Usually you put your safeties back there, guys that are smart, that can react, cover some ground, but don't have to cover a lot man to man. So that's a mismatch. Excuse me, running backs on linebackers. One back forces the defense to declare itself. You spread them out, you ask any quarterback that's played a whole bunch, they like being things spread out because it's a lot easier to, you can't disguise blitz nearly as well when you've got an offensive formation spread out. So you spread it out and you can get them to declare themselves. Most of the time, they'll tell you it's man or zone, okay? What type of zone, and even in many cases, whether they're blitzing. It also empties the box, which we're talking about, the box being the tight end to the other side tackle, who, how many people are in there to stop us in the run game and whatever. Personnel, the, 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 to me, and this is my own opinion, the, the very best way to go a one back is to go with three receivers, one back, and a tight end because the tight end, taking the tight end out of the game takes a lot of run game away from you. But when you keep a tight end in the game, one back and then three wide receivers, you, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of one back runs you can do with a good tight end in the game if he can block. So instead of going four wides, um, we really like the idea of keeping a tight end and we do that with the Seahawks, we did that at Miami, and it gives you a lot more threats, run and pass. Formations, D formations, balance formations. Two receivers on each side and a back. T formations is an overload. Three receivers on one side and another receiver, you know, counting the tight end on the other. D and T. D formations are balanced. Two on each side. T formation, uh, three on one side, one on the other. And when we go back to uh, attacking the blitz, it's a mental approach. As you coach it, as we coached it, I've always coached it, you want receivers, quarterbacks to go, oh boy, it's a blitz. We got a chance for a big one, rather than the other way. Oh no, they're blitzing. You know, I'm going to get hit. We're going to play is going to get messed up. Okay, see it, protect it, and attack it. And it goes back to the kiss principle. Um, the the blitz package that we had at Miami, that similar in relationship, simple blitz package. Keep it simple. Okay, if we have to audible, we're going to audible to one or two or three things at the most, and we're going to stay with those things all year. Let's execute it. We're going to audible to the same protection all the time so we know how to block it. Not going to audible to a whole bunch of different protections and then go after it. Really hate hot throws. Every coach hates hot throws that has a, a many, at least most coaches that have a, a passing game hate to throw hot because too many things can go wrong. Quarterback doesn't see it, he gets hit. Quarterback sees it, but the receiver or back that was supposed to good hot doesn't see it. So the idea is avoid the hot, so we just go three-man pattern, seven-man protection, and uh, get it off. So be simple with a, a, an attack when you attack the blitz. And again, it goes back to fundamentals. Good quarterback fundamentals, good receiver fundamentals, the line, knowing who to block, how to block them. Fundamentally, we're not doing you know, spend all your time on fundamentals and less time on X's and O's. Keep stuff simple and execute it, and you've got a better chance. And then be prepared for blitz and bluff, which is a little bit about what we're going to talk about right now, which means people say they're going to show you a whole bunch of blitz looks and then come out and play zone, or maybe they come. You don't know. Quickly, a quick look at the protections. There's a couple of different ways to go seven-man protections. Um, you just take a 4-3 or a 4-4 four, four or whatever, uh, you know, a balanced defense, an eight-man front of any kind. Um, there's two ways of doing it. If we're going to go three-man patterns, 
we're going to get these three people out and we're going to use our tight end to block and we're going to use our remaining back to block. So how are we going to do it? Well, there's two ways of doing it. I'm sure everybody's aware of it. And there's probably more than two ways, but two basic ways. One would be to put the back weak and put the tight end strong and keep him blocking the man over him and then man block it, basically. If you went with the back weak, he's going to block <coughs> that man. We're here. The center and the guard are going to block that stack, and these two people block that stack. And then it's a man deal. We do not account for the safety, and you'd have to side adjust on him <coughs> in that case. Um, so you're really looking at, at uh, the back weak and the tight end staying in, and you put yourself in position to block those people and put three men out into the pattern. The other way to do this would be to send the back strong. Put the back here and then turn the front. Tight end stays here. And then we send these two back <coughs> here. He turns here. He turns here. And then the guard and the guard turns back for the middle linebacker. Excuse me. So we turn back out. We would turn, go back out to here. We're here, here. The guard comes through and blocks that backer. He steps down. The back blocks here and the tight end blocks there turn in the front. Some line coaches, a lot of line coaches like that because it helps them with some of the games. And if, if for instance, this man does not come, then they end up with an extra blocker back inside to help with get some double teams on some of the people. But basically, we're looking at, <clears throat> to me, the simplest way to do it is to put the back weak and keep the tight end strong. And it can tie in with a lot of the different quick protections. What we used at Miami, and I'm sure if you listen to Dennis, and a quick protection is very similar to this drop back protection or that we're looking about here, where we're blocking here, and then it's man here, 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 and here. And again, we have to side adjust off of this man right here. If for some reason he started coming, we'd have to side adjust or do some other things based on who else was coming. All right. And then against uh, the eagle or the reduction on the weak side. Again, it would be back weak. Here, here, here. Man on the backer with the guard. And then he's there. And by doing this, we've got everybody pretty much, with the exception of a safeties, accounted for in blocking. And we can go a three-man protection, and if, or excuse me, a three-man pattern and a seven-man protection. And if they bring seven people, we can pick them up. And that gives them, that gives everybody one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Okay. So we'll look at some of the quick patterns right now, three-step drop, and some of the things that are good against zone and man. And I've got out of the balance set here first, the quick game that if you think they're going to blitz, it's good whether it's zone or man. Basically, we'd like to work combinations when we do these things, because if it is blitz, I mean, it's blitz, it's fine. You can work the two-man combinations. You've got two guys to look at. But if it is zone, you need to kind of have two guys working. And what you do on the backside doesn't really matter, because we want to work, if it's zone, be able to work a two-man combination over here and try to get something out of it, even if it is zone. Um, so we'll work <coughs> patterns over here. Now, one thing that, that we did this year with Rick Meyer um, and as a, probably a pretty good deal is on the back side of a lot of our patterns, we just put hitches in, <clears throat> no matter what was going on on the other side. Because first and 10, if you can get six yards throwing it out there, that's a pretty good deal. If it's uh, third and five and you're trying to run a pattern, but they give you the hitch out here, we'll put that in there and let him go. If you see that, you've got the hitch out there. So we would put a hitches on the back side of a lot of the things that we were doing on the two-man side and just say, if you like it out there, go ahead and throw it. If it's a five-step drop or a quick game, whatever, if it's five, take a quick five and throw the hitch out there. Take it if you can. And now it gives him a place he feels comfortable instead of standing back waiting for something to develop. I got that right there. Let's take it. Sometimes they don't give it to you. In the quick game against blitz and against zone, the double hitch concept, and it's a very simple little deal, but it's, it's pretty good against man and zone. In a three-deep zone, as I have drawn up here, this flat defender is what we're trying to put in a bind. 
if he were to take off and run to the outside hitch, where he vacates, we're just going to sit down. If he stays inside here and we're covered, we'll say, just stand there. Let him cover you up. We'll throw the ball outside. That's not very complicated, but a lot of games have been won doing something along those lines. And I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but going back to the KISS principle, the simpler you keep it, the more high efficient you are. You move the chains and you score points. So against a three deep zone, the double hitch thing right there is great. I mean, if it's man, then you got, if they're off, then you got two throws right out there in front. Okay. Going back to uh, simplicity again, three deep zone. thing that everybody has seen is the flat and the slant. Five yard slant, tell him to come in and gear it down once he passes the flat defender. Come under control and sit in the zone. If it's three deep zone, then you're going to take the flat defender here in a three deep zone. Make sure you get a couple of yards up the field and then angle to the sidelines. Make that flat defender play. If he doesn't, throw him the ball, let him catch it and run for five, ten yards. Run the slant in behind it. I mean, it's all, everybody's all seen this stuff before, but it, it's, it goes back to being simple and executing and giving people things that they know how to do. And if you're not sure whether they're going to blitz you or not, because this is good against blitz. All right, and then the other one that's, that we like to do, and it's not as good against three deep, would be the, the outside streak and then the out, where you've got to get on the outside shoulder of the flat defender and break away from him up at about six yards. This one's a little harder because in many cases the flat defender will want to stay to your outside and play the flat. He's taught, I've got the flat, don't let anything get outside of you. So if he overruns you or if the snap runs outside of you, then you just hook that thing and just hook it down and out and stop and the quarterback's got to be able to read it. But if you do these things as, a, as, a, as something that you're doing all the time, you can make them work against any coverage, and you say, well, there's a lot of reads there. If a guy runs, but if you're not doing a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, they can quarterback and this can communicate this. If that flat defender runs outside or lines up outside of this guy and buzzes to the flat real quickly, then you tell him to just turn out and sit down and be ready to come downhill to the ball, make the catch. Now, if you do that same thing against cover two, this is where the check with me's come in. If, or the two-play huddle calls, you want to throw the quick game and be solid if it's, you know, maximum protection, you're throwing the ball, you're protecting here and here. With these two people going a three-man pattern, you can go check with me on the slant and flat or the uh, out and streak. Now, against cover two, the out and streak <coughs> is a very good play. This is a protection release out here. When protection release tells him, you go outside regardless of what happens and try to go through his shoulder with contact. And if he takes you into the bench, great, because we're going to throw this thing right there. In a two deep alignment, more times than not, this defender is going to stay inside or head up, and you're going to be able to break on a six yard out away from him and downhill again to don't, not give him the angle. So. The slant and the flat, or the hitches, are very good against three deep zone. They're also very good against man, blitz. The out and the streak is better against two deep. It's not real good against three deep. But it's also very good against blitz. So the bottom line is both of those routes are good. Some are good against two deep, some are good against three deep. They're all good against man. So here's where your check with me can come in, or a two play huddle call. And, if, and the way we've done it in the past is that one pattern is blue and one's red. And you can just say, check with me, blue or red. Everybody knows what protection it is, or you can call it 90 protection. Check, nine, check with me 90 blue or 90 red. And it's a simple thing. So if they blitz us, I can call whatever I want. Both of them are good. If they come out and play too deep, I know blue is the better one. Great, I'll go blue. Everybody knows, OK, I'm protected. I'm going to run the out. Good. If they come out in three deep, then you go red and you get your slant and your flat. So the idea is, if you want to throw a quick, and they, you're not sure, but they may blitz, but it could be two deep or three deep, but 
I want to be covered anyway, just check two play huddle call, check with me. Uh, and go blue or red or however you want to call them so that you've got the two different possibilities. And it's, a, it's, it's very simple and, and people can pick it up. The quick game in a three-man side, you, you have basically the same thing and now you can work a three-man combination over here and you can run the slant, the flat, and the seam. The advantage that the seam gives you now over here is that what you didn't have in the two-man side is you didn't have anybody to hold the inside linebacker. Now you can run this seam up here and just kind of throttle him down and gear him down right in here, go three-step drop and read your slant and your flat off of the strong safety. And basically on the progression, you'd look for the flat route. If you got it, take it. It'd be one, two, and then maybe come back here three and then run if it's not there. And you didn't have that advantage with the whole, somebody holding the inside backer in the two-man side. And again, if it's blitz, now you may tell the quarterback, if it's blitz and it's man, that guy's coming and the free safety's covering him, forget about the other stuff. Let's go over the top and go get the deep, big play. Okay. Streak, streak out. It's the same concept. Now we're getting double protection releases, and we're going to run the route similar to that. Protection release tells him if there, you, you go outside that guy. Whatever happens, you go outside of him, protect him, get his hips turned, make him mess with you. You drive up the field and you be ready to come out of it on any angle such as that. Three-step drop game. In most cases, when you, when you teach linebackers drops and all that other stuff, they're taught to drop to 10 yards or 8 yards, whatever the case may be. We're throwing routes here at 5 to 6 yards. They're not ready for it. So in the quick game, they're going, the coach says, okay, drop back to six to ten yards and then sit and look. You're throwing the ball before they get set. It catches them off balance. You're protecting it. You're threatening them and running it here. And if you get blitz on this, you've got a great little short throw and you've got two chances to go by them over the top. And then you would have all streaks, which is, uh, you know, against this, it's, you're pretty much trying to occupy the two deep defenders with three people keeping separation, and on the quick game, the quick game can be a deep game. Three steps and put the pressure here and just read it inside out. One, two, three, and if the, the free safety gets held here, then your second guy down the seam has got a chance if you've got a strong arm quarterback that can get it in. Now the whole concept of, of blitz stuff in the quick game, the way it started out with, the, with the, this tailback here, the inside receiver being what we always had as our best receiver, we would always put him there. <clears throat> because if we did have a chance to audibleize against Blitz, we would always base whether we called blue, red, green, or whatever we were doing, which basically would be one of these two things. It'd be a flat route, an out route, or a streak route. We wanted to isolate on this man. If we knew it was man, uh, this, if it was man coverage, we were going to isolate our best guy on that safety if, when he came down to play us. And how do we tell that what we told the quarterback was, we might have, this might be called blue, this might be called green, this might be called red. And these complementary routes were usually just takeoffs and protection releases. We would tell the quarterback, we say, well, what do I check to against blitz? We've got three things we check to. What do I go to? Well, it's all based on the depth of this guy. If he's way off at about eight, nine yards, then you check the flat route, send him to the flat right now, and let him catch the ball and run with it and make that guy make the tackle if he's way off. So, okay, if he's way off, check red or whatever the case might be, and then throw him the flat route, let him get it in his hands, make this guy come on an angle and make the tackle. Now, if he's up a little bit tighter, about six yards, where we'd probably, he could jump that really quick, then we'd say, okay, check the green, where it's a six yard out, and we can push him and then break away from him, threaten him and break away from him. And then if he was up real tight, bumping, then we'd say, check red, and go over the top. Blue, green, red, I, we change the colors every year, so I, I kind of interchange them somehow. 
but that would be the Blitz Audible at, my, at the University of Miami. And everybody would say, boy, you guys do a great job. Oh, it must be some real complicated stuff and this and that. And it's not really. Base it on this guy right here. The farther he is off, get the ball in that guy's hands right now and let him run. Yes? Okay. All right. Let me show. I got one drawn up here. Got one drawn up here somewhere. You say an eight man or a. Similar to that? Two linebackers. Mm-hmm. Well, in 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 this in this front, then what happens is that, that this guy becomes the responsibility of the back. And I didn't get into that because I didn't know how much everybody saw this deal. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, when that man, when you get this threat right there, however they've aligned it, and he becomes a threat in here, there's two ways to do it. One is to turn the front, which we used to make a protection call, and call rip, 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 which would put everybody to the right, and it would stay the same. The back would block here, and then everybody would turn down to this direction, and a, the lineman that would then account for the, the back in the middle, which in a lot of cases is a good way to do it, because even if this back, you assign him there, he can hit that gap before he can get up in there and get him. So many cases, uh, Florida State used to do this to us a bunch at Miami, and we would have to turn the front down so that we would be able to, in fact, it wouldn't turn, it would be right here. This, I've got that kind of backwards. He would be here, and then the, the, the guard and the center would be responsible for that stack right there, okay? So we'd turn the front back and do it. And in this front, we would quarterback or someone would have to make a bear designation, bear call, bear call, rip, and do it that way if we were concerned about it. If they didn't make the call, then the back would be on the middle backer. Okay. Um, so really, in the, in the blitz, keeping it simple and basing everything on the inside receiver and then making any audible calls if you can do it or have time. We really just based it on the depth of that man playing this guy, get the ball in our guy's hands quick and, and give him a chance to run with it. Now in the drop back game, which in a five step drop back game against Blitz, I think gives you a few more options than some of the quick game stuff. But if you take the two man side in a balanced formation, and use basically the same thing with the back block and weak and the tight end staying in. A couple of different things you can do. Uh, the out route and the option. But the option, more than not, ends up being a, a route similar to that. This is good against three deep. <clears throat> this is good against two deep. It's very good against man. Again, whatever you want to do on the back side, a hitch is great. Maybe he wants to raise up and throw it out there. Maybe that safety's back in here over the tight end. He got that. Put it over there and let give the quarterback a chance to take it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with punting on fourth down either. It's, it's a hell of a lot better to punt sometimes than to have the quarterback get hit in the back of the head because he's standing back there and against the blitz waiting for a couple people to come open. Throw it if it's fourth and if it's third and uh, third and ten and you throw it for six yards. Well, let's punt. That's all right. I mean, the TV announcers get on you for not throwing the ball deep enough, but the opposite of that is the quarterback standing there against blitz, waiting, 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 hit, fumble. Now they got the ball in your territory. So you can't be afraid of that either. But anyway, uh, the, in the five step, the protection stays the same, back's weak, tight ends in, and now we're running just a 12 yard out and a, and a six to eight yard option. And we give him a little bit of depth variance there. Tell him six to eight and work downhill. Read the out first, then the option inside, okay? It's very simple. If you do it against, it's very good against two deep. If you do it against two deep, now the out converts to a protection release, and the option 
is the same thing, six to eight downhill. Now you've really come down to one guy having to get open. You can't really, the fade's not going to be real good against too deep, but he's going to protect it, and this guy's got to win, and he should because he's got that room to the outside to work downhill. And this has been a, a very effective pass. The out against three deep would be 12 yards. The option inside would be six to eight. One point on uh, running an option route. We always tell them, if the guy is sitting on you right at the break point, then climb on contact. And it kind of goes back to some of the principles and routes that we've talked about before. If someone's going to sit on you, and you're supposed to run a route at six, and he's sitting at six, and he's ready to push you out into the where you're going to go and cover you up, climb on him. And what that means is, basically, as he comes to me, and if I sit here and break right in front of him, he's going to push me and then step right into where I'm trying to go and cover me. So we get to the break point. That's why we give him six to eight on some routes, six to nine. Get to the break point. He's right there. Climb on it. Take it a little bit deeper, which means now when you climb on contact, I'm going to take you up the field and threaten you deep. Now, which means I'm going to turn my hips. Now I can break away from him because I've got him moving up the field. So climb on contact, threaten deep, make the guy move his hips. Watch the defender and see if you got him. If he's sitting, move his hips, get him moving up the field. Now against man, obviously the out and the option are very good. It's just bang, bang. Just You've got two things right in front of you there, the out, you know, I draw always. I always draw these things more downhill than they're supposed to be, but again, there's a reason for that. I want my receivers thinking, come downhill, come downhill. But there's your out and your option there. Probably the best pass that I've ever uh, been associated with that is good against just about every coverage they play is a pass uh, that's, that everybody calls China or whatever. And basically, six yard hitch, corner route by an inside receiver, and then whatever you want to do, if you want to have the big play available on the post backside, do that, do the hitch. The great thing about this is the corner route from the inside alignment. This is an easier route to run than a corner route from out there. Number one, you've got more room, so the sideline is not as big a factor in terms of being a defender. Uh, the corner route from an inside alignment, you don't have to make a lot of, you don't have to change a lot of direction to get down inside. You're straight up the field and you can make a good quick post move and go to the corner. This route out here, <clears throat> if you teach it, is a catch-all route. It's a get open route versus any type of off coverage, you just, have, you just uh, drive off and run a hitch. It's no different than a hitch. In this coverage right here, cover three, it's a hitch. You stand and wait for the ball. Don't go anywhere. Just stand there. Now, if the quarterback says he's looking for that corner route, he looks for that and he doesn't throw the hitch and that corner backs off and plays it and here comes the flat defender buzzing out to you to cover you. Wait for him to get to you and then cross his face and come inside because he's moving towards you, running out this direction. You wait for him to get right to you, then you step right inside of him two, three yards and you can, the timing on it will work where the quarterback looks at that corner, he buzzes out to you, you step inside of it, you can catch the ball right in there. And uh, if the quarterback, if you look at it and you teach him, his progression should be throw that hitch anytime you got it. <coughs> then you got the corner over the top. If it's a too deep, this is really a good route. Same thing. Okay, now I'm going to still run that same hitch. I'm going to run right up there in front of that guy and stand there and make him think he's got me covered. Great. All right. Now I'm going to release here and go to the corner. Against too deep, I, now all I've got to do is beat this guy. If this corner holds down in too deep and sits there, I'm going to sit there and let him cover me. I think he's doing a great job. We're going to try to sneak that corner route over the top of him. The break point here would be about 12 yards. And then over the top, throw it over in there, away from that safety, you've got a chance of getting a good completion. If all else fails, and my goodness, you know, normally this guy, this guy trails with him a little bit. Corner route, the guy falls down or it's not open. Then real late, again, in slides that little hide route right there. Sit there, wait, 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 be patient. Let the quarterback take a good look at the corner, then slide in late. 
and then against man, same thing. You've got that. You've got the quick throw, which is great. Get it out of your hand against blitz. Then you've got the post route from an inside position or a corner route from an inside position against a safety. And it's, it's, it's this, this route right here. And if you, if, if you want to do something with the back to help yourself, if they don't blitz, then you always check him down inside. And you've got a nice little dis distribution to hold an extra guy in here, whether it's man or zone. And you've got a quick throw available to you. It's good against cover two, because you've got a real good chance at the corner in cover two. You have a real good chance to throw the hitch in three deep in man. And you also have a real good chance to throw the corner in man. And this pass is probably a catch-all. And you, I'll just, because I'm running out of time, I'll show it to you out of a three-man side real quickly. But it's probably the, the favorite. I mean, there's so many people running it anymore. But it's, uh, the reason for it is it's good against just about every coverage. OK? Now, if you do it from a three-man side, this throw becomes a little bit longer. But just sit out there and wait or tighten your splits down. You want to tell him against three deep zone if he can inside release and then run the corner. That will help him in three deep zone because it will make the flat defender will almost without, we can't help himself. He's going to want to step inside and jam you, which pulls him off of that hitch, helps you out there. And then you just take this man and run him through the seam. So really, if you call it in three deep zone, you still got that hitch throw out there. And that's not bad. If you get a two deep to a three man side, which very few people do, but some do, you got that. Now you take an outside release and run to that flag. And then you run him through the seam to put pressure on this safety. So he's got two people coming at him. He can't overplay the corner route. And so the same thing goes. If nobody, these guys get the ball late and the quarterback's just getting ready to bail out, this guy slides in. All these people will have fallen off underneath. And then against man, it's a great route because you, if you want to get it out of your hand, you can throw the hitch. You want to hold it, take a look at the corner. And if you want to take a chance and beat that guy over the top, you've got three people going deep with the chance for the big play. And like I said, uh, I really think in your progression with the quarterback, start here and let him get it out of his hand. Take that six, seven yard route. And, but if it's third and 14 or something like that, if you get in those situations, then yeah, maybe Tell him to skip that part of the progression and look for that corner and try to get it. And then if it's not there, then come back again late to that little hide sitting down underneath. OK, I appreciate it. I thank you. Uh, went through some of this a little bit quick at the end here. Uh, if there's anybody that has any questions, I'd love to answer them after we get done here, maybe out in the back or something. Thank you very much, and good luck to you all.